I can't believe it's been almost 2,000 years since my last walk the earth. And here we are, still spending time together. You know, it reminds me of the time I met my disciples on the Sea of Galilee. I remember the day well. It's when I met Peter. He was a hard man, sturdy, weather-worn and tired. But I wish you could have seen the look on his face when I said to him, toss your net into the water one more time. His eyes looked at me as if to say, who is this fool? <coughs> but I didn't command him. I simply suggested that he follow my lead. Mm. I know when he looked in my eyes, he saw my love. He saw the power of the Holy Spirit within me. Sure, he got a net full of fish out of the deal, but that wasn't a miracle that day. The real life-changing event was the change inside of Peter. When he stopped what he was doing and just looked my way. I wish you could have seen how his heart of stone broke in front of me. How in that moment, all the self-centered self thoughts that he had melted into the river of my love. I smiled so broadly because I saw in my mind all the moments that we would share together and the destiny that was unfolding. The destiny for believers forever. <laughs> awesome is the word. Awesome. It was all about the new covenant. You see, I knew where I was going. I knew that the whole purpose of my life was to be a sacrifice for all mankind. I knew what it would cost me. But before I go to Calvary, there were preparations that had to be made. Soon, I had 11 more disciples like Peter. <coughs> well, I must admit, I had fun choosing this mismatched bunch of ragamuffins. <laughs> but they weren't all fishermen. There were carpenters, professionals, and there's even a treacherous, traitorous tax collector. Ooh! <laughs> there were also many women who played a crucial role in this life-changing event. It was women who followed me from Galilee and took care of all my needs. It was women who stayed at the foot of the cross until I gave my last breath as a man. And it was to women that I first revealed myself after I had risen from the dead. I think it's safe to say that these men and women were in the right place at the right time. Over and over, I would try to instruct them using stories, parables, but nine times out of ten, they would miss the point completely. <laughs> I wish the Bible could share how I laugh at them. The closest the Bible comes, where Luke writes, at that time, Jesus, full of joy and the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Oh, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Imagine, it was my Father's good pleasure really enjoying his creation. Think about it. They would try so hard to understand only to be completely confused, or even worse, waging arguments among themselves. But I love them more than words could express, even when they blew. One of my disciples, Philip, he came up to me one day and said to me, Lord, <coughs> let us see the Father. They don't all make sense. I said to him, oh, Philip, so long I have been with you, 
but still you don't know who I am. You see, my Father is in me, and I am in my Father. Even these very words that I say, it's my Father living in me. Another time, I said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Well, when they heard that, they looked at me and said, this man is a few fish short of a catch. <laughs> they didn't understand. Come to think of it, there was much that they didn't understand. They weren't the brightest and best, you know. <laughs> but they were the ones chosen by my father and I. They were absolutely perfect. Each one with a specific role and a specific truth to bear. Just like you. You see, when I chose my disciples, and when I choose them today, I know about all their limitations. I know their strengths, and I know their weaknesses. And I don't care about that. Those that have weaknesses, that doesn't make me love them any less. And those that have many strengths, that doesn't make me love them any more than anyone else. I formed you like a powder forms a vessel. My fingerprints are all over you. You are by far the most stupendous creation that we do. And it's not just the incredible collect complexity of your bodies. You were made in our image. I am the spark that generated life. And I filled you with tremendous potential. Even today. But that's why I'm so deeply sad single child who has taken his mother. You see, I created your inmost being. I knit you together in your mother's womb. You were fearfully and wonderfully made, and my works are wonderful. My eyes saw your unformed body. In all your days written in the book of life, before they came to be. You see, you are my sheep. I know it's not a very flattering comparison, but there's a reason for that. Because sometimes you do very unflattering things. <laughs> but you need a shepherd. Not just any shepherd. A good shepherd. You need someone to lead you to green pastures and to still waters. Someone to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. To protect you from the wolves of this world. And when you wander away, when you go too far from home and find yourself entangled in thorns, when you cry out at night and there's no one will hear you, you think it's hopeless. That's when you need someone to come after you. <laughs> to go into the mountains and search through the rocky places. To search high and low until finally I find you. You need someone to free you, free you from the thorns. To anoint your head with oil. With thorn, to anoint your head with oil. To announce to all the heavens and with a shout, rejoice, rejoice. For I have found my lost sheep, <laughs> my precious man. I tell you the truth. I wish you could hear what it sounds like when thousands of angels gush with glorious rejoicing when one lamb is returned, when just one soul that was lost in sin comes back to me. Wow. What a party, huh? <laughs> Now, I know what you're thinking. If I love you so much, and you are all my precious land, why? Why is life so hard? Why don't I just change you and make you perfect and free from sin? Well, in the beginning, you were. 
You see, the original model had no flaws. <laughs> we were so pleased with the work of our hands. There was perfect re relationship. It was harmony. There was no I or me or them. There was only we and us. But to make it all real, we gave Adam and Eve, and you, free will. Ah, uh, that's when everything got sort of complicated. Uh, with freedom, many problems were inevitable. Freedom, like sex, is divine dynamite. If it's mishandled, it explodes. It causes a lot of damage. There is always someone who will abuse their freedom and end up with envy, lust, fear, unrighteous anger, and the subtlest of all evil. Pride. Don't be fooled. The greatest trick the devil ever po pulled was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. <laughs> For as my disciple Peter wrote, your enemy the devil prowls like a lion waiting for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know your brothers and sisters in the world are all experiencing similar Resist. I say again, resist. He will do. Call on your Father, and He will, at the appointed time, reach His hand and guide you because He loves you. You need, you see, I know that your life is hard. I know that you are suffering. I suffer too. In my darkest hour, when I was all alone, weeping in the garden, when all my friends had abandoned me, do you remember that story? But do you remember what I did? What I prayed? I prayed for you. I said, Father, let them be one, just as we are. The glory he gave me, I give to you. You know it's the glory you felt a little while ago when we were singing those wonderful praises. My presence comes into you. <coughs> it is my joy. It is my pleasure. I want you to know what my love looks like. I'll tell you the truth. One of my disciples really got it. He really knew who I was, who I am. John wrote these words. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7. I love it. I love it when you sing as little children. I came to show you that perfect love. I was ready, I was willing to give up my life so that you might be spared. Willing to wear your crown, to be nailed to the cross with your name. But more than that, the judgment of a holy and righteous God was poured on me. And I took it all. There's none left. And now, when my father looks at you, he sees me. He sees my suffering. He sees my blood. It covers you and covers all your sin. And you, who were once so far from him, he has brought near. He has given you now the right to become children of God. The result. I think that very passionate apostle of mine, you may remember, he spent quite a long time in prison. <laughs> Actually, a lot of my followers, followers spent time in prison. But this guy, he was really nasty. He hated my bride so much that I literally had to blind him so that he could see me. After that, he was never the same. 
he really expressed it perfectly when he said, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything of all of creation would be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And now, you have a mission. I am challenging you. It's not going to be easy. Oh, as long as you're in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. Men, you will have thistles and thorns. I clearly meant it when I said, if you come after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. But know this, you are not alone. My Father is with you. Isaiah the prophet wrote these words from the heart of my father. I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. And I will keep in perfect peace those who focus and are steadfast. And you are not alone, because I am with you. I tell you the truth. I am forever interceding for you at the foot of the Father. You are not alone. God's Spirit is with you. As I promised my disciples, I will ask the Father, and he will send you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. And you will receive power in the Holy Spirit when he comes upon you. You will be mad witnesses to all of creation. Ah. And you are not alone. <coughs> the body of believers is around you. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. And if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus purifies you from all sin. Here, Lord. I have told you these things so that you would be in me and have that wonderful thing, my peace. I know it seems hard, but don't be deceived along the way. The pleasures of this world are nothing compared to what happens in eternity. So I say to the man who I just healed of leprosy, See that you don't tell anybody. <laughs> and what does he do? He goes out and tells the news to everybody. But you can't blame him. What would you do if I just healed you from some terrible disease or some awful oppression? Would you keep quiet? Over these many years, there have been billions of healings and deliverances. It gives me such great joy to be about my father's work. I love being me. <laughs> Can you imagine the sights my eyes have beheld? Still today, I witness tears welling up and bursting into tears of joy when you and I team up to bring tender compassion, liberty, and love to the lost. Now, we come to a difficult moment. In this moment, I need you to remember me. I want you to join me in the upper room with all my disciples. They were there, and now so are they. How can I pretend that I don't know what's coming? This is what I've come into this world for. I know that very soon I'm going to suffer betrayal, and be abandoned, pain beyond all measure, and finally death. Some people think that because of who I am, that this was easy. 
was never easy for me. I pray to the Father, let this cup pass from me. But I had to complete my job. My little children, I have longed to share this meal with you before I suffer. I'll tell you the truth. I will not eat of it again until it is fulfilled in my Father's kingdom. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not be hungry. And if anyone eats of this bread, they will live forever. But the bread that I give for the life of this world is my flesh. Take the bread. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread. You see, I am the vine, but you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish in my Father's will, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified. And know this, just as the Father loves me, so I love you. Huh. Take the blood of my covenant, which was poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I'll tell you the truth, I will not drink of it again until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Take it, drink it, all of you. My little children, I will be with you just a little while longer. For where I am going, you cannot follow. So now a new commandment I give to you, that you would love one another, even as I have loved you. By this, all will know that you are my disciples by the love that you share to one another, share with one another. And do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me, and do not be afraid, for I leave with you my peace, not as the world gives it to you, but as I give it to you. Glory to you, Father. Have you been down upon your knees? To try to hear if he would speak to you about what's going on. I say, stay with me a while. Just relax, my child, and the confusion in your mind will soon be gone. Well, I want you to know me more than you ever have before. So I may show you things beyond that which you know. I say I no longer call you servants, but now I call you friends. For what the Father gives to me, I give to you. Opening up to me, I come into your heart and fill you with my ever love and joy. I am your friend, I always have been, living inside of you. I give you reason to live, and I give you reason to give more of yourself, more of yourself. Though it seems sometimes you're blind, I know you'll always find your way back to my ever love and care. Ever changing all the same, I know that you'll remain there to be with me, be my glorified. I am your friend. Living inside of you, 
I give you reason to live, and I give you reason to give more of yourself, more of yourself, always more of yourself. And the wonder of the Holy Spirit Fills you with a light of a million suns. And if your hearts are quiet, you will hear my spirit and wait a Peace.